Hello Gene, this is Eric, and uh, I thought I'd just give you a quick overview on the Excel that I have, which is the 2007 version. But you'll notice I talk about this uh, function bar, which tells you about, you know, what's in a certain cell. So if I click this cell here, and I hit a 1, you can, you can see that the cell up here is also a 1. If I make this into a formula, which I have to use an equal sign to make it a formula, and I can see equals 1 plus 1, which I'm hitting right now. And if I hit the Enter key, then it'll be 2. Now if I click here, you can see that that's the formula for that cell. Now what I can do here is, see, I'll hit a 1. And I'll click down here. I can make this a formula and say equals 1 plus th this cell. And you can see A3. If I hit the check or the enter key, then I have two there. Now I want to make this column centered, so I'll click the center thing. And now I want to sit there and drag down and count. And I hit Control D, and it just fills in all of the formulas down. You can see on the formula bar, it's 1 plus A3, 1 plus A4. See how it upgrades the A4? Okay. Now, if I sort or anything, these numbers are going to change. So what I'll do is I'll sit there and highlight the, the formula cells, right click, I'll copy it, and then I'll go, I probably can right click, paste special, and just say values, and I'll hit OK. And now you can see that it's a number instead of a formula. So that's how I set up the numbering columns. Now I'm going to um, start making a formula with cells, I guess. Let's see, let's put this, let's change this into something else. Let's call this investment, S-T-M-E-N-T, and I want to insert a cell, so I highlight that whole row. I need more room, and I'll insert a row, and I think I'll insert another row, just for some space. And in this cell right here, I'm going to say interest. Okay, and hit the check mark, and I have that. Now, this is the cell I'm is going to calculate, or I go, it's going to be where you put your investment number. Let's just for the sake of it, put a hundred dollars. And interest is going to be fourteen point five. And I guess I should call this percent. So. Whoever puts it in there knows that they have to put in the whole number. And I'll just double. If I take a row and double click it, it widen out. So if I say this is a day one, let's call this column day. Shift. Where is my shift? D. And I'll call this interest earned. And I'll call, okay, enter. This column needs to be a little wider, so I just double click it. And cumulative amount. Earnings. Check double-click this. Now I can put a formula here. So I'm going to say that's equal to B2, which I really have to make that into a percentage, right? Divided by 100 to change that value to a real percent. And I'll say it's times, which where's my times key? times this value. I check it. <coughs> okay, so the interest for the hundred dollars on day one really should be day two is fourteen point five dollars. Now the trouble is if I drag this down, I'll just do a little bit control D down, what's happening? There's B one, B two, B one, and then this one goes see how it um 
increments these cells? Well, that's a problem. So in order to make sure that that $100 stays there, okay, I can say, well, this right here has got to stay B1 no matter what. Okay. I don't want that to change at all, so I'll just put a dollar in each one of them. Okay. Now, when I you know, copy it down, I still will have a problem because... I hit. We see that um, we have an error here. In other words, when we look at these formulas up here, we see it uh, moves away from where the interest is supposed to be. In other words, it's incrementing up, which is not what we want. We want that 14.5% to stay 14.5%. So in order to make sure that it references the interest cell, B2, we have to put a dollar sign in front of the B, which means the column won't change, and in front of the 2, which means the row won't change. So if I hit that and calculate down, and I'm going to go all the way down, we'll end up with still errors, but the whole 9 yards is we still have a problem here. Number one, B1 is there. It goes to B2. Well, no. That's not what we want here. Right now, cumulative earnings, which I'm including interest, I'm going to make this cell equal to the original $100 plus the interest earned. And if I hit enter or the little check mark, I end up with $114 after the day one, or first day of uh, accumulating interest. So that makes a lot of sense. But when I go here, we don't want B2 to be included in the calculation. What we want to have is th this interest times what we have in the bank. So we have to change that to C5. Okay. Now we got $16.60. Now let's go to this cell. Well, what is this cell? This cell is really equal to what we had in the bank the day before plus the interest earned for that day. And we hit that, and now we got $131. Now I think this formula is going to work out. Let me just control this down. Control D. Still something wrong with this formula. B1, C5, B3. Where did B3 go to? No, that's supposed to be C3. Okay, C5, B1, C5, C6, uh, excuse me, there we go. Now if I pull this guy down, see what happens. Oh, look how the interest is growing. Now these are a lot of different funny things, you know, the numbers are way too messed up so I want to change that I just right click go to format cells which it's supposed to be doing I'll change it to currency two decimal places and let's see how that looks now we can see pretty much what we got here as far as money goes looks like I have to control D down here a little bit so here it says after 19 days, you put $100 investment in at 14 and a half interest per day, percent interest. Oops, this is supposed to be per, uh, just a number. Excuse me, format cells, number. That looks better. Well, we can see that that can grow into quite a large sum of money after 19 days. So that's basically... 14.5% a day calculation. That should be it. I hope that helps.